individuals with a colorectal cancer less than 50 years have a high tendency of family and therefore a genetic testing and a genetic counseling is essentially required if this disease is diagnosed in cases of patients having age less than 50 years because then you have to go and look for the family members for the screening for the colonoscopy and if you find polyposis then you have to look as the number of the polyposis if they are between 100 then it's an apc or mutyh mutation testing you have to do it if they are more than 100 of the polyps then apc testing is to be done and in case of the negative genetic testing treat all cases as a familial one because of the high incidence of the uh, familiarity in these patients now various mutations as i said you have to find out what syndromes it is syndromes with adenomatous polyps includes the apc gene mutations the mmr gene mutations the syndromes with the hematomatous polyps includes the putzschager syndrome the juvenile polyposis syndrome the cowden syndrome the mixed polyposis syndrome the bpr uh, syndrome uh, other familial syndromes which includes with the myh it includes the familial adenomatous polyps with the family history of col uh, colon cancer includes which has a more than uh, three times the degree uh, in case of the first degree relatives and so on and so forth the syndromes goes and forth you have to find out the fap also where the gardner and the turcot syndrome are quite common with the adenomatous polyposis with uh, the hereditary non polyposis colorectal carcinomas you have to find out the msh2 mlh1 msi the pms2 with the myh associated polyposis which is having a multiple gi polyps autosomal recessive mvh gene has to be looked for to the putzschager most commonly has the stk11 syndrome uh, gene mutated the cowden syndrome has the p10 mutation the juvenile polyposis syndrome has the bmpr 1a mutation and 50 percent of the adults with will be found to have an at least one colorectal polyp during their lifetime 30 percent of the adults will be found to have at least one colorectal adenoma during their lifetime and these polyps and adenomas are precancerous they have the potential to develop into invasive adenocarcinomas and that's why the syndrome when associated with polyposis should be very carefully looked forward to and as i saw that those with polyposis with fab syndrome they have a lifetime risk of multiple cancers not only colorectal cancers which is more than 99 percent incidence but the duodenal periampullary cancers around 12 percent thyroid 2 percent gastric 2 percent pancreatic 2 percent hepatobiliary again uh, 2 percent of them the additional extracolonic cancer risk also are associated with familial adenomatous polyposis the stomach 61%, desmoid tumors 15%, duodenal adenomas 100%, osteomas 20%, dental abnormality 17%, and so on and so forth. So in FAP, colorectal polyps begin to develop on an average around 16 years of age group. The median age to start is 39 years with a 7% uh, developing colorectal carcinomas by the age of 21 years and 95% developing before the age of 50 years. In the lifetime risk of... Um, Colorectal carcinomas in AFP is 70% with an average age at around 50 years. And you have to find out these associated potential genes for it. The MVH associated polyposis, where duodenal polyposis is present in 17%, colorectal 80%, and periampullary, and so on and so forth. The WHO diagnostic criteria for serrated polyposis includes any individual with any of the following at least five serrated polyps proximal to the sigmoid colon with at least two larger than 10 millimeters greater than 20 serrated polyps of any size and any number of the serrated polyps proximal to the sigmoid colon in an individual with a first degree relative with the serrated polyposis and you have to surveillance um, for those who have an FAP disease among the family or uh, the uh, relatives you have to look out for these polyps at a very young age so you have to start at 12 to 14 years of age you have to do a sigmoidoscopy or a colonoscopy at interval of two years until the polyps develop and the surgery is indicated for all of them 
in AFP, again, 20 years, uh, you have to look forward to the, the same. And you have to find out. Uh... Hello? 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 In AFP, uh, again, from 20 years, you have to start doing colonoscopy at an interval of annual or biannual uh, based on the edema, adenomas burden. And in MAP also, around 18 to 20 years, you have to start the colonoscopy every annual or biannual. The extra colonic screening, you have to look at the upper GI endoscopy and side viewing examination for the duodenal and the periampulary, small bowel visualization for the small bowel, thyroid examination and ultrasound to be done, the CT abdomen and pelvis for the desmoid tumors, the AFP for the hepatoblastomas. And similarly for others also, you have to look for uh, the various colonoscopies, physical examinations, tumor markers, and so on and so forth. Wherever you find these adenomatous polyps, you have to address them by using a colectomy or a proctocolectomy, depending upon the age, disease burden, risk of desmoid tumors, you have to look for the secondary chemo prevention using aspirin or other things, post-surgical surveillance for rectal and extracolonic tumors. And colectomy essentially is necessary in two-thirds of individuals depending upon the polyp burden. Chemo prevention that has I've told, COX-2 inhibitors, aspirin mostly investigated, primary chemo prevention not demonstrated, secondary chemo prevention to reduce the number and the extension of the colorectal uh, things. The clinical features for the Lynch syndrome includes the early onset of the colorectal carcinomas with proximal colon, predominantly lymphocytic infiltration, endometrial and other cancers, any abdominal organs, but RCCs are the most common with sebaceous skin and brain tumors. The highest risk of the second colorectal primaries includes in the Lynch syndrome. On the basis of the guidelines, you have to look for the colorectal carcinomas in less than age 50 years. Any patient with two uh, hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancers, related tumors, patient with a colorectal carcinomas age less than 60 years with an MSI instable histology, patients with colorectal carcinomas and first degree relatives with uh, LS related uh, Lynch syndrome related cancers, one of the cancers at less than 50 years, patient with a colorectal carcinomas and two or more relatives with a Lynch syndrome related cancers regardless of the age. For the genetic testing, depending upon uh, what the IHC pattern is, you have to look for the MLH1, the PMS2 uh, status, and also then sequentially uh, test for the BRAF and the PMS2 to find out the diagnosis. And that's a uh, testing algorithm for the Lynch syndrome, requires genetic counseling, requires a detailed uh, discussion outside the scope of, of primary general practitioners. A pair of a tumor test can distinguish between a long Lynch syndrome from the Lynch syndrome. You have to look at basically the two, that is the MLH1 promoter hypermethylation and the BRAF status. The most common is the V600E variant and then find out for the same. The recommended screening management for members at the risk of Lynch syndrome, colonoscopy every annually, endometrial sampling every annually, transvaginal ultrasound every annually beginning at the age of 25 to 30 years, urine analysis and the history and physical examination. The risk reduction surgeries includes uh, uh, various surgeries like hysterectomy, bilateral sulpingophorectomy, colorectal resections and the recommendations in average risk and increased risk uh, patients from the GIT consortium panel. You have to look at the colonoscopy. You have to offer every 10 years uh, the fecal blood uh, examination plus the flexible sigmoidoscopy. Offer screening. Um... Are they going to be called? Karna? For the same. And similarly, uh, you have to find out various. Uh, selection categories for, for various tumors for the same.